Hey, what's going on guys? Today I have something that I've never done before on this channel. I'm really excited to do. I hope you guys like it. What we're going to do is we're going to get out three different board and trains and teach and introduce three different new behaviors to all three new dogs. One of the things I want to teach you guys today is how to teach a dog how to focus on command. How to tell your dog, hey, look at me or watch me and have the dog actually cue to that and look directly at your face. All you're going to need is a little bit of food and a leash and of course a dog. And it's really, really simple guys. And you can use this for many different things in the obedience world um, to get your dog to focus with you. It's just a great command to, to create that engagement, create that glue, uh, builds a better relationship. And it's just one more thing in your toolbox that you can do with your dog. So I'm going to start that right now with Prince. And I like to use food instead of an object just because a food is very targeted. You can target it very easily to your face uh, where if you use a, a ball or a tug toy, it's a little bit more difficult to, to use that. So here we go. Yes. Focus. Focus. Little pressure. Prince. Focus. Yes. Good focus. Yes. Good focus. Good focus. Yes. Good focus. Good focus. So all you're going to do, guys, is take that food, ride it right up from the dog's face, right to your face. Good focus. Eye contact. Good focus. Ah, ah, ah. Yes. Good. Okay, break. So if you guys just watch there, a very beautiful thing. He, he looked away, which is what your dog is going to do more than likely. Um, looked away. Little leash pop. Looked right back at me. Bang. I paid the dog. I'm just using focus as a cue. Uh, for the verbal and uh, you guys can do whatever you want. You can do focus, watch me, um, bubble gum, it doesn't really matter. Yes, focus, yes, good, ah, ah, focus, yes, good focus. Good focus, good focus, buddy. Ah, good focus, yes. Paying the dog directly from the actual focal point is huge, good focus, because it doesn't take, it doesn't take the dog's focus away. So you're not going against uh, what you're trying to teach. Good focus, buddy, right from the face, which is the target, directly down to the dog's uh, mouth. Good, break. So that was perfect. You guys continue to work on that duration. So holding that focus for longer periods of time and so on and so forth. Now I'm gonna show you what the end goal should look like. Being able to take the food away and the dog still locking in on you as the target, as a focus. And then if the dog stays on you and the food's over here, or the motivations over here, you then reward the dog. And that clearly tells you that the dog is proofed and that they understand the cue or the, uh, the command that you're asking them to do very clearly and they can capture it very clearly. So we're gonna try that right now with Prince. Prince, sit. Yes, good sit. Focus, good focus. So he's on me. Good focus, yes, but ah, uh -uh. yes, good. Ah, uh -uh. good, good focus. Little verbal check there, guys, no point. Ah, uh -uh. focus. So if your dog does this, guys, and looks away, give a little pressure. Yes, good focus. And then, re ah, ah. yes, good boy, good focus. Yes. So that's gonna happen, break. That's gonna happen with you guys pretty often. What's gonna happen is, is your dog's gonna look away. And again, just a little bit of leash pressure, a little couple taps just to remind them, hey buddy, look at me. As soon as they do, make sure you're using your verbals to say, yes, that's what I want you to do. Um, and they're just learning uh, through that. So, All right, so the food's gonna come out, focus. Yes, buddy, good focus, good focus. So I'm gonna reward him there. Good focus, good focus. Food's gonna go away, focus. Yes, yes, good focus, yes, boom, good boy. Break. So over time, guys, this is the first time he's ever done it with me. This is his first training session with the focus command. He's doing brilliant, he's a pit bull. They're one of my favorite dogs to train. Um, awesome, awesome job. So the goal, guys, is for you to be able to say, hey, I want you to focus on me. The motive's going away, they stay locked in on you. They look at you, they do everything you want, you then, boom, and then pay them. If your dog tracks that item, you're not quite there yet. You have to continue to, 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 to work on that. But the focus is gonna come in handy for all of his other obedience in the future. So that's the focus command introduction 101 really quickly in this little series that we're doing with some of our boarding trains. So if you guys have any questions on the focus command, make sure you leave them in the comments below. We have the best community. You guys are so good about helping each other in the comments. I'll do my best to help as well, but that's the focus command. So we're gonna move on from that. We're gonna get another dog and we're gonna do another uh, thing.
All right, guys, so the next thing I want to do is just recall. Recall is obviously teaching your dog how to come to you on command. And I've even done other videos with this, but what I'm going to do is give you some really easy tricks and tips on how to start the recall right now when you guys want to go home and work on this right now with your dog or one of your client's dogs. So again, we have Bailey here. She's one of our board and trains that we have been working with. We haven't really been focusing on recall. So we're outside, it's a little bit more advanced. All you're gonna need again is a flexi leash uh, because the dog can go out for longer periods of time and you can recall the dog in really quickly. I like using the 25 foot flexi leash because it really gives you an advantage and leverage to sending the dog the furthest away you can. And before I forget guys, we're doing a free No Bad Dog Mask giveaway, just like we did the last video. I'm giving three of them away. All you have to do to enter to win is itch your neck. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. All you guys have to do is simply leave letter by letter your dog's name in the comments below. If you, if you entered any other video, it's totally fine. You can do it again. We're gonna keep doing this. I wanna give away as much free swag as I can to you guys. You guys are the absolute best. We're continuing to grow. You guys are continuing to support each other. This is so fun. So anyway, so leave your guys' dog's name letter by letter in the comments below. Win yourself or an opportunity, a free No Bad Dogs mask. Go. And Bailey has a slip collar on and I have some food motivation right here. So I'm gonna show you how to do this. The first thing you're gonna do is you're gonna say the dog's name. So you're gonna say, Bailey, come. And that's the, the command that we're gonna be using. Now, if she doesn't come pretty quick, then we're just gonna respond to the dog with a quick little check on the leash. So we're gonna do it right here. Bailey, come. Yes, good girl. Come, little pop. Yes, good girl, good. Okay, break. So you guys just saw there how I redirected her path. So I said, come. She's like, ah, I don't really know what that is. She started coming towards me. She turned a little bit and I gave her that pop on the slip collar. Bailey, come. Yes, good come. Yes. So that was a perfect example you guys just saw about. And again, this is very easy and very basic, but the, the key things that I want to tell you guys about teaching anything really, but in this case, recall, the slip collar is huge. It's the ability to correct or punish the dog if they completely ignore you. This command is single-handedly, legitimately a life-saving command. If you say, hey, dog that I love so much, come here because there's things going on and they don't, that's a problem. So being able to actually punish the dog for non-compliance will be the difference between your dog potentially living or dying in certain situations. And I know it's dark, but it's the truth. And I'm here to help you guys. I'm here to help your dogs. And of course, I'm here to help uh, our board and train. So I think that like these little nuances uh, that I'm teaching you guys in the tips and tricks uh, segment here that we're doing today for the first time is just a little bit of slip collar, a little bit of pressure to make sure the dog gets corrected or punished or gets some sort of pressure if they decide to say, no, I'm just gonna ignore you and go my way. That, that example was perfect. The other thing that I would mention is small little treats. When you're doing any type of obedience work, you don't want your dog chewing on it, crunching on it, treats are going everywhere. All they need is a small little tiny piece of food. I typically actually just let them lick this or chew on this and then I send them back out. They don't need a lot, guys. And oftentimes, just a good, hey, good job, good boy, good girl, is just enough as well. Break. So we're gonna do this again, guys. We're gonna let her out. We're gonna say her name, we're gonna ask her to come. If she comes, we reward her verbally immediately. If she doesn't come, we correct her or punish her immediately. Bailey, come. Yes, good come. Sit. Yes, good, okay, break. So now you guys are starting to, me to see, you guys are starting to see me add a sit in there. Now one thing, again, going into this little tips and trips tutorial is it's not so much teaching how to teach the recall, it's more about all of the individual things that go in between the recall that make it successful. And one of those things a lot of people struggle with is when you ask a dog to come, a lot of times they just kind of come in your direction and then fly back away. That's because when you're in this process and you're in this development stage of teaching the dog, you want to teach them what you want in the future. So what do you actually, what does come going to mean for you? Do you want your dog to come and tag you, you're it? Or do you want them to come and sit in front of you so you can leash them up or you can, you know, keep them away from danger? So that's the other thing I'm going to start doing and you guys will notice is I want the longevity of my obedience. What I'm doing now should be applicable in the future. So I'm going to let her out and then you'll see I'll put her into a sit in front of me and then I'll pay her. I want the bridge between the sit and the come to be one one thing. So when I tell her to come, she comes to me, I put her into a sit, I pay her, and it's all gravy. So that's that's what I want in the future because that's what I want the recall to be. So that's what I'm going to do. <laughs> Bailey, come. Yes, good calm. Sit. 
Yes, good break. So that was another equation that you guys got to see. She turned to me, but she didn't come to me. So if your dog is halfway or trying to say like, eh, then you give them that, that correction. They heard you, but they decided not to comply to what you wanted. So that was a perfect example of what to do if your dog just decides, eh, I'm not really into that right now. Give them a quick pop. We're gonna do this a couple more times, and then we're gonna grab another dog and do a brand new other thing. Bailey, come. Yes, good girl, sit. Yes, absolutely, wonderful, good, good job. All right guys, so last but certainly not least, we are working with Grizzly Bear. He's also one of our newer board and trains. He's a German Shepherd, and he's gonna be working on Leave It. So Leave It is going to be impulse control, thresholds, uh, basic obedience of like, you can't have that unless I say. This is so big for so many people for so many different reasons. The Leave It command is something that we put in every single board and train that comes through our facility no matter what. And so basically guys, what it does is it just tells the dog, no, you can't have access to that, you can't have it. Um, that's the way we apply it. And, and with dog training, as you guys know, there's so many different variables of how to apply things and things like that. But in this case, Leave It is just, hey buddy, uh, this food's gonna go down, I know you want it, but you can't have it until I say. So we're gonna get right into it right now. So I'm gonna let him know what I got, sit. Oh yes, good sit, good boy. So all I'm gonna do guys is he has a little plastic pinch on. So we're gonna put the food down, leave it, leave it. Good, leave it. Good. So as you guys just saw, I corrected him for going after the food. So all I'm using is the leash and I'm just giving him some, some pressure on the leash if he goes for the food without my permission. We've already done the break with him so he understands and knows that. But when I ask him to uh, leave it, basically he has to leave it Yes, good, leave it. And the other key to this success, guys, yes, good boy, leave it. Yes, good, leave it. Yes, good, break. Other key to this success, guys, is having a secondary source of motivation. And in this case, it's gonna be for my treat pouch. So I'm basically gonna put the food down and I'm gonna tell him to leave it. If he leaves it, he's gonna get paid from the same currency or the same motivation from me. So he's like, all right, I'll listen to you, bummer. But then I'm like, hey, boom, and then I pay him. Now again, the leave it is gonna be applicable to barking at other people, barking at cars, uh, uh, counter surfing, uh, literally anything. Anything you want your dog, hi buddy, I know. Literally anything you want your dog to not go after or engage in will be the leave it command. So I'm gonna continue to do this and proof him through this so you guys can see exactly how to do it. I'm gonna ask him to leave it. Grizzly bear, leave it. Yes, good, leave it. Yes. Leave it. Leave it. Good, leave it. Good. So as you guys just saw, he went in nose and I, I'm, I'm wait, he has to wait for my permission to access this food. So again, it's, it's threshold building, it's relationship building, it's impulse control, it's obedience, it's all of that, but that was brilliant. So really for you guys at home, get yourself some sort of collar that administrate some sort of correction or punishment or pressure, martingale collar, flat collar, any, any type of collar that just says, no, 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 you can't have that yet. And then I'm gonna, now I'm gonna show you exactly how to release it. So the next question is, is like, well, how, when do I let them have it on your terms? He doesn't know break as much as he does leave it at this point. So if I break him, he's not necessarily gonna go to the food. So I'm just gonna give him food. Yes, break, good. Yes, break, good. Grizzly bear, leave it. Yes, good, leave it. So you guys get, can get creative and continue to like work on whatever it is that your dog is obsessed with or motivated by or locked on. That's a great way to teach the leave it. And then the leave it is gonna be applicable across the board um, in all your dog training purposes with your clients or with your own personal dogs. But it's just a great way to build a relationship. So that was three different things with three different dogs something we've never done before. I hope you guys liked it. If you haven't yet, don't forget, like, subscribe, turn on your notification bell because of course we give free giveaways in every single video. I appreciate you guys watching. If you guys have any questions, leave them in the comments below. I appreciate you guys. I will talk to you next time. Peace.